And now Kenya has reviewed its timeline to achieve 10% forest cover from 2030 to 2022. This was revealed during the launch of a joint implementation plan on climate in which the United Kingdom pledged 1.2 billion shillings towards funding new climate initiatives by Kenya. Environment Principal Secretary Dr. Chris Kipto also announced that Kenya has begun the process of listing the Mao complex as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Emily K. Bade with the details of the joint agreement that is aimed at ensuring sustainable development. Kenya and the United Kingdom jointly launched the Year of Climate Action as a build-up to the COP26 that is scheduled for 2021 in the UK. Uh, it's a confirmation of commitment by the British government uh, to deepen and strengthen collaboration with the government of Kenya in areas of environment and climate change. We are very proud to be here launching it and we think it's so important as we look ahead uh, to COP26. It is during the launch that the Ministry of Environment revealed it had an ambitious plan to meet the 10% forest cover within the next two years. To, to this end, we have developed a strategy to realize this 10% tree cover earlier than 2030. His Excellency the President took this through the cabinet and he told us you need to meet this earlier. Principal Secretary in the Ministry of Environment, Dr. Chris Kipto, also disclosed the country was in the process of listing Mao Complex as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. He also pointed out that 70% of the country's greenhouse gas emissions is as a result of land-based activities including deforestation, mainly due to expansion of agricultural land, high dependency on wood fuel and demand for timber. Just like COVID-19, Greenhouse, gas, greenhouse uh, gases respect no boundaries and both ex, uh, pose existential threat to our survival. The irony is that Africa contributes the least to greenhouse emissions, yet um, in terms of uh, the burden uh, of, uh, from these emissions, it, it bears the greatest burden globally. Deputy High Commissioner to Kenya, Julia Scott, hailed Kenya's effort in addressing climate change, pledging 1.2 billion shillings of UK funding for new climate change initiatives by Kenya. Uh, we're increasing our support to Kenya to respond to climate change, but actually this is part of a doubling of our international climate finance. And the commitment is to £11.6 billion. Pounds. And uh, uh, that is, uh, uh, the governor will correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's £1.7 trillion. Kenyan shillings uh, over the next five years. Court pointed out that the funds will be used to expand the Pact Green Recovery Challenge Fund to support low carbon transitions, handle plastic waste and water pollution in the wider Lake Victoria region, preserve cultural assets threatened by climate change and support two SMEs in Kenya to recycle used PPEs and create new PPEs from recycled plastic. Meanwhile, a 1 million indigenous tree nursery initiative has been launched at Karura Forest, aimed at inspiring change to protect the environment. Changing the story is not just about planting a tree. It's about sustaining the growth of a tree, of, of a tree to maturity. The initiative is being spearheaded by the Kenya Forest Service in partnership with a local bank. I appreciate the partnership of NCA for this establishment of a tree nursery for indigenous trees. And I look forward to planting trees together so as to change the story. We as NCB will continue investing in this initiative. As part of our investment in this nursery, we're also going to be supporting the operational costs of running it. This for Channel One News, I am Emily K. Buddy.